Borno State Government has shifted the relocation date of some internally displaced people in Bama local government area. This announcement was made by the State Governor Kashim Shatima when he visited the area to commission 10 government buildings destroyed by the Boko Haram sect. Apart from the military exercise to flush out insurgents from the area, the state's government plan had been to make close all makeshift camps in Meduguri by May the 29th. For almost two years, Bama local government area of Bonu State was under Boko Haram control, with homes leveled by bombs of insurgents. The military takeover of the communities in March of 2015, however, brought peace with it and an opportunity for a rebuilding plan to commence. The state government, with funding from the Victim Support Fund, is living up to its rehabilitation pledge. The internally displaced in Bama are filed out today to welcome the governor, who is here to see the commissioning of 10 government buildings destroyed by the Boko Haram sect. What we are here to commission today is a a typical manifestation of reconstructing better. The secretariat we are commissioning today, the schools and other infrastructure we are with, that we are commissioning, the maternity, are better than what they were before they were destroyed. Spread out here is all that they have produced at the camps. A testimony that their time has been creatively spent. The governor recognizes that several steps have to be taken before the IDPs can return home. When IDPs return to communities, they will still need to go to their farms, market, and to travel for economic and social purposes. We must be sure that farms are safe and roads are safe before we allow our people to return. Then comes the disappointing news of delay. Unfortunately, this is no longer feasible because the military are still carrying out operations in some areas around Sembisa as part of the mob of exercise. As much as these displaced people long for their homes, their return can only be made possible when it is certain that the only thing waiting for them is peace. Thank you, Joma, and welcome to Sports News. The Nigeria Football Federation, the NFF, has confirmed that the Super Eagles will play two international friendlies, one against Corsica and the other Togo, which are part of preparations for the 2019 African Cup of Nations qualifiers against Bafana Bafana of South Africa in June in Uyo. Home-based professionals Ikechiko Ezenwa, Al-Hassan Ibrahim, Stephen Odi, and Sikiru Olatubosun will report for Paris on the 22nd of May as the three-time African champions take on Corsica on May the 26th and Togo on the 1st of June. A top-flight soccer game in Sweden has been postponed over allegations of match-fixing. The game between IFK Gothenburg and AIK was set to be played today, but it has been called off after a player was approached by a match-fixer on Tuesday. According to the General Secretary of the Swedish Football Association, the footballer who plays for AIK was offered a significant amount of money to underperform and actively work to make sure his team lost the match. And that's what he reported to the association. Tennis now and second seed Novak Djokovic has qualified for the Rome Masters quarterfinals with a 6-4, 6-4 t- third round win over Spain's Alberto Batusta. Djokovic beaten in the final by Britain's Andy Murray last year will face one Martin Del Porto in the quarters after the Argentinian's third round 7-6, 6-3 win over Japanese Kei Nishikori. Third seed Stan Wawrinka became the latest high-profile casualty at the tournament when the Swiss was knocked out by American John Eisner. Eisner took his ace count to 72 in third three rounds as he powered past Wawrinka 7-6, 6-4 to reach the quarterfinal. And to the prize ring now. 
where UFC lightweight champion Conor McGregor says he has signed a deal to flight Floyd, Floyd Mayweather. McGregor concluded negotiations with UFC president Dana White over a proposed bout with Mayweather on Tuesday, with the Irishman describing the contract as historic. Mayweather retired from boxing in September 2015, but recently stated along with his advisor, Al Heyman, that he will fight McGregor if both fighters can reach a deal that makes business sense. And finally, we end on a rather sad note. The hospital treating former MotoGP champions, Nikki Hayden, says a 35-year-old is still in critical condition with bleeding in the brain, a broken leg, and a pelvis. Hayden, who rides for Red Bull's Honda team and the Superbike World Championship, was hit by a car while training along Italy's Adriatic coast. Known as a Kentucky kid, Hayden won the MotoGP championship on a Honda in 2006. He last raced in the championship in Spain in September 2016 as a stand-in for injured Australian Jack Miller. Wishing him a speedy health. And that's it on Sports News for tonight. I'm Barong Tony Uranta. Ani Jama will be back with a wrap. Thanks, Barong. A woman has died and 22 others injured after a car sped onto the pavement of New York City Times Square. The Honda vehicle jumped the curb, traveling for three blocks before crashing. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio says there is no indication of an act of terrorism. And U.S. President Donald Trump has once again denied any collusion with Russia. The president was answering questions from reporters in the White House following a meeting with the Colombian president. He said there was no evidence of a collusion, and even America's enemies said so. He also denied asking sacked FBI Director James Comey to end the investigation. Earlier in the day, he lashed out at the decision to appoint former FBI boss Robert Mueller, special counsel to oversee the inquiry into Russian influence on his election. He tweeted in the morning, this is the single greatest witch hunt of a politician in American history. The announcement of a special counsel took the White House by surprise, with President Trump being informed of it after Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosentine had signed the order. And the UK Observatory for Human Rights says more than 50 people have been killed in fighting in Syria's Hamar province. The attack was carried out by the Islamic State and at least 27 government troops or militia were killed. The group is now said to be in full control of Aqarib as government sends reinforcement to the area. And the main news again. The acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, today signed three executive orders that will ease business in Nigeria. In the orders, government agencies are mandated to grant preference to local manufacturers in their procurement of goods and services. Also today, Nigeria and Morocco signed a historic agreement to construct a gas pipeline linking West African countries to North Africa and Europe. And a speeding car today slammed into a crowd in New York Times Square, killing one woman and injuring several people. Well, that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks a lot for being with us. I'm Nijoma Bunyato. Good night.